Right, welcome Karina Autengruber, President of the European Youth Forum. Um, my first question, the European Youth Forum is a transnational organization. Um, which difference do you see between the European youth and different countries with regards to digital skills? I think a lot has to do as well like with uh, the general situation in the country as well, like which tools they're providing, uh, which education they re receive as well, like in, in schools for instance. Uh, we see some countries who have a very strong focus on e-participation, uh, as well like providing services online, but then you have other countries where uh, more is still happening in administration where you literally need to go to an office. So I think there is um, in general quite some differences still uh, that we notice across Europe, I would say. Right, interesting. But how can digitization help to empower the European youth and also enable youth participation? I think digitalization can be a great tool actually to reach out as well, like and engage young people in discussions as well. So I think this is definitely something important. Um, young people are active on Facebook, on Twitter, on Snapchat as well. Actually, this is the most exciting tool for, for young people nowadays, so where they can simply share like photos among their friends as well. And uh, this is a tool that policymakers should engage more as well and use actually as well, like to reach out to young people as well and actually use these tools uh, to engage with young people people and start discussions with them because it's so important that policymakers also go to actually the places uh, where young people are active and this also must include of course the online uh, world as well and I think this is so important nowadays that we have these discussions where young people and policymakers are coming together as well. Mm -hmm. But of course this should not only happen in the online world but also offline because we know that human interaction is important and we've seen it with Brexit, we've seen it as well like with the elections in the United States when there is this lack of human interaction, when there is this lack of policy makers and their constituency that it can lead to outcomes which are not always favorable as well. Right, interesting. Um, which possibilities, possibilities do you see for AI to positively contribute to our society and foster participation among young Europeans? I mean, on the one hand, what AI can do is, of course, it uh, can replace uh, work which is quite in manufacturing areas and it also can replace work which requires like statistical thinking which is kind of like machine based work. So I think here it can take over tasks and there we don't necessarily need human force so to say. Uh, so human can, humans can then uh, focus more on developing uh, solutions for challenges that we're currently facing. So for instance, when it comes to climate change, to really focus on how can we tackle the skills and not like use their skills on uh, topics that actually robots could take over. Mm -hmm. Well, this might be a follow up, but what is your greatest wish for the future of Europe? Uh, my greatest wish for the future of Europe, uh, I actually have many of them, I would say, mm -hmm. but one of them is definitely that we create a more sustainable Europe as well, also for future generations. We see that this is currently a big topic for young people all across the world. We see it with the climate protests currently all over, but we also need to work and ensure that there's a social Europe, so where also social protection is guaranteed for young people, and I think this should be one of the priorities for the upcoming years. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.